What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Fett, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze each week that may be underexplored or unknown to players in the VGC community. Today, we will be exploring all of the currently known new changes in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, from new Pokemon, to new moves, to new mechanics. Because this is new content, I do want to caution that there will be very minor spoilers, but I won't show any of the cutscenes from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon or talk about the plot at all. A huge thanks goes to Nexus on Smogon for compiling the list of confirmed mechanics changes in the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Battle Mechanics Research thread, which you can check out yourself in the description below. First up, as most of you probably know, three competitively relevant Ultra Beasts were introduced, Naganadel, Stakataka, and Blacephalon. If you remember my Mechanics Monday on Beast Boost, you'll remember that there is no such thing as a Beast Boost tie, and that there are certain mathematical deductions you can make just from knowing an Ultra Beast base stats alone. Stakataka is a great example of this. Many players have already recognized that by giving Stakataka a lonely nature and dropping defense IVs, it can get an attack Beast Boost, which is beneficial due to its powerful Gyro Ball. To clarify, the exact IVs here are 16 or 17, not 14 or 15. Remember, because of the Beast Boost Order rule, attack is prioritized when attack and defense tie. If Stakataka gets an attack Beast Boost, that also means it's not using minimum speed, which impacts Gyro Ball damage on some Pokemon, and it also means Stakataka is forced into specific physical bulk. Another example of this property in action is that Naganadel cannot realistically get a special attack Beast Boost without using a modest nature, which means you can determine Naganadel's nature if it ever takes a KO. I've left these and other kinds of mathematical properties related to the new Ultra Beast in the description below. Speaking of the Ultra Beast, Blacephalon's new move Mind Blown also has some interesting properties. You can kind of think of it like a 150 base power Lava Plume that has high jump kick recoil, but there's a little bit more to it than that. To start, Mind Blown always rounds up its damage, unlike what usually happens in Pokemon. This means Blacephalon can never use more than two Mind Blowns in a game without something like Heal Pulse helping it out. Mind Blown always takes recoil damage, unless the move outright fails. For example, if all three Pokemon on the field use Protect, Blacephalon still takes damage from Mind Blown, which really hurts its viability as a move in BGC, in my opinion. However, Blacephalon doesn't take any damage if it was the only Pokemon on the field after using Mind Blown because the attack failed. Something similar would happen with Kyogre's Primordial Sea and the move Powder as well. Additionally, Mind Blown inherited a bunch of the properties of Explosion. In addition to not being usable in Damp, if you end the game with a Mind Blown and all Pokemon are knocked out, the Blacephalon player will lose the game, just like Explosion. Clangorous Soul Blaze is Komo O's Z move, which requires clanging scales as the base move to be used. I apologize for not showing the full animation here, but I don't like copyright strikes, and I haven't found a clever animation to use in the meantime. If Clangorous Soul Blaze is successful, it boosts Komo O's stats by 1. Clangorous Soul Blaze is not successful if it lands into two fairy types, which means that using Komo O's Z move into double fairy is a really bad idea, because you won't just get the stat boost. However, because Clangorous Soul Blaze hits through Protect and Wide Guard in the same way that normal Z-Moves do, Protect and Wide Guard are not enough to stop Komo'o from getting its boost. Blintered Storm Shards is the signature Z-Move of Lycanroc, which is based off of Stone Edge. Any form of Lycanroc can use the Z-Mu, so you're not just restricted to using Dusk Form Lycanroc or anything like that. After this move is successfully used, terrains are removed from the field, and that's all. In my opinion, this is a worthless Z-Mu, and Lycanroc is also a bad Pokemon, so don't expect to see this one come up too often in VGC18. Although I've already done a video on Wide Guard, it bears repeating that Wide Guard now reduces the damage of Z-Moves to that of regular protected damage. For example, if Landorus T goes for a Z-Earthquake into Aegislash after Aegislash used Wide Guard, 
Aegis Slash takes reduced damage from the Z-move. The base of the Z-move doesn't matter here. Z-Earth Power would also be reduced, for example. Additionally, Wide Guard offers this protection to the partner as well, which means Wide Guard as a whole got super buffed in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. If you'd like to see this interaction more thoroughly explained, check out my mechanics short on Wide Guard, which is down below in the description. Finally, Ion Deluge has become a useless move in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Instead of doing something, now the move just fails all the time. It's actually really funny. Players who discovered this attribute it to the introduction of the new move Plasma Fist, which applies the old Ion Deluge effect whenever the attack is used. Whatever the reason, Ion Deluge has now been reduced to that of a priority splash. The rest of the interactions in this video deal with the new forms of Necrozma. In a similar manner to Kiram's fusions with Zekrom and Reshiram, Necrozma can fuse with Lunala and Solgaleo to form Dawn Wings and Dusk Main Necrozma, respectively. Both of these Necrozma forms carry over the typing from Solgaleo or Lunala and keep Sunsteel Strike or Moongeist Beam, but they gain new base stats and use Prism Armor as their abilities. In addition to Solgaleo and Lunala, Duskmane and Dawn Wings can use the Z-Move variants of Sunsteel Strike and Moongeist Beam, which, like Sunsteel Strike and Moongeist Beam, ignore the opponent's ability in a similar way to Moldbreaker. For example, you could use Searing Sunray Smash to 1-hit KO a Pokémon with Sturdy, or hit through Lugia's multiscale. All Necrozma forms have access to Necrozma's new signature move, Photon Geyser. Photon Geyser is a Psychic-type equivalent to Moongeist Beam and Sunsteel Strike, but with an extra rule. Photon Geyser is physical if the user's attack stat is higher, but it is a special attack if the user's special attack is higher. To clarify, if Photon Geyser is a physical attack because its attack stat is higher, then it deals damage calculated with the opponent's defense. In a similar way, if Photon Geyser is a special attack because its special attack is higher, then it deals damage calculated with the opponent's special defense. Importantly, Photon Geyser does not just consider the raw stats when it decides if it is physical or special. Boosts and drops are considered as well. That means that you can potentially turn Physical Photon Geyser into Special Photon Geyser by switching in Intimidate, for example, or do it the other way around with a Moonblast special attack drop. Both Duskmane and Dawn Wings Necrozma can undergo what's called Ultra Burst to transform into Ultra Necrozma, assuming they are holding the Ultra Necrozium Z. This is very similar to Mega Evolution, but it does not take up your Mega Slot for that battle. For example, as you can see here, you can Ultra Burst and Mega Evolve on the same turn. Ultra Necrozma turns into a Psychic Dragon type with high offensive base stats. After Ultra Burst has occurred, Necrozma has access to its signature Z-move, Light That Burns the Sky, assuming it also knows Photon Geyser. Light That Burns the Sky carries over the Mold Breaker effect and the highest stat effect from Photon Geyser, and is 200 base power. Ultra Necrozma also has the new ability, Neuroforce, which essentially gives it an expert belt. To be clear, when you Ultra Burst, you don't lose access to your Z-Move at all. You can Ultra Burst and still use another Z-Move, for example. However, because it does take the initial turn to Ultra Burst, Ultra Necrozma cannot use Light That Burns the Sky on the same turn that it undergoes Ultra Burst. And that's all for today's Mechanics Monday. Although this list was as comprehensive as I could be, I'm sure new mechanics will arise that have yet to be discovered. As always, check out the Battle Mechanics research threads in the description below if you want to read more or stay up to date on new interactions discovered. What do you think of the new changes Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon gave us? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, have a good one.